everybody. I'm Pascal Antolin, and I'm head of CLIMA, the research group that Sophie and uh, Amélie belong to. And uh, it's really a pleasure to welcome you all to Bordeaux Montaigne University on this nice June morning. I'm very grateful to Sophie and Amélie for asking me to introduce this conference in the name of CLIMA. And uh, first, I would like to congratulate them on the exciting program that they have prepared, thanks to all of you. And uh, while it is no doubt an honor to be with you this morning, it is also a, 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 a challenge. Indeed, what can I say about Charles Bukowski that you don't know already? You are all experts on his work or aspects of his career, and I must confess that I'm not. So after much hesitation, I have thought that maybe the best way to introduce this uh, conference might be to leave him the floor, so to speak, and read a few quotations I have picked up, either in his short, story, in his short stories or in his letters. And uh, uh, if you wonder why these uh, uh, in particular, it is because they are mentioned, sorry, they mention several key themes from America to the war to writing and writers. I used a book entitled On Writing by Charles Bukowski, edited by Abel de Brito in 2015. Uh, I saw the name on the program. I haven't met. Oh, that's you. <laughs> I'm delighted. There, there was no consultation, and she had found your book. So great. Uh, so I will start with a passage from a short story entitled Kid Stardust on the Porter House, published in the collection The Most Beautiful Woman in Town, first published in 1967, and I quote, You had to be a winner in America. There wasn't any way out. And you had to learn to fight for nothing, don't question, end of quote. Now, now to your book. Uh, now, a passage from a letter to Lawrence Ferlinghetti in 1966. Ferlinghetti published the Arto anthology from Antonin Arto, the, the, the French uh, writer. In so this book was published in 1965. And Bukowski reviewed the book for the Los Angeles uh, pr Free Press in early 1966. And he writes, quote, On the auto, I found many of, this, of his thoughts extremely similar to my own, in fact. I had the feeling, as I read, that I had written many of the lines. Bullshit, of course but he's one of the few writers who makes me feel that I can't write at all. I don't get this feeling very often." End of quote. Now a letter to Robert Head on October 18th, 1967. I quote, this is a longer quotation. Well, they get longer and longer, actually. I don't know why. So, quote, I was anti-war a long time ago at a time when it was not popular or in to be so. It was a very alone situation, World War II. It seems that, from the intellectual and artistic viewpoint, that there are good wars and bad wars. To me, there are only bad wars. I'm still anti-war and anti a hell of a lot of other things. <laughs> but I still remember the other situation, and how poets and intellectual, intellectuals change like the seasons, and what trust and stand I have rests mainly within myself, what's left of me. And when I see the long lines of protesters now, I know that their courage is only a kind of semi-popular courage, doing the right thing in proper company. It's so easy now. Where the hell were they? when I was thrown into a cell, World War II. It was very quiet then. I don't trust the human beast, head, and I don't like crowds. I drink my beer, hit the typer, and wait. The next 
is an extract from a letter to Gerard Dombrowski in January 1969. And Dombrowski published the first lengthy critical study, as you probably know, of Bukowski's work. And the letter dates back to January 1969. I quote, you know, the main problem so far has been that there has been quite a difference between literature and life and that those who have been writing literature have not been writing life, and those living life have been excluded from literature. There have been breakthroughs through the centuries, of course, Dostoevsky, Céline, her early Hemingway, early Camus, the short stories of Stoganev, and there was not Hampson, Hunger, all of it. I don't know whether you know not Hampson, it was a Norwegian writer. Kafka and the prowling pre-revolutionary Gorky and a few others. But most of it has been a terrible bag of shit since 1955. There has been a throwback of the bag of shit. Of course, there have been a terrible lot of turds, ghostly thrown, thrown upon us and swallowed publicly since then. But now, we're on a state of mold, and there hasn't been much breakthrough because the good writers write pretty goddamn well, but by God, very much alike. End of quote. I will now quote from a letter to Lafayette Young in October 1970. Quote, I have to drink and gamble to get away from this typewriter. Not that I don't love this old machine when it's working right, but knowing when to go to it and knowing when to stay away from it, that's the trick. Mm -hmm. I really don't want to be a professional writer. I want to write what I want to write, else it's all been wasted." End of quote. And I will now conclude with a passage from a 1983 letter to Los Pequeño Glacier, I quote, Take some poets, some start very well. There is a flash, a burning, a gumble in their way of putting it down. A good first or second book, then they seem to dissolve. You look around and they are teaching creative writing at some university. Now they think they know how to write and they are going to tell others how to. This is a sickness. They have accepted themselves. It's unbelievable that they can do this. It's like some guy coming along and trying to tell me how to fuck because he thinks he fucks good. If there are many good writers, I don't think these writers go around, walk around, talk around, abound thinking I'm a writer. They live because there is nothing else to do. It piles up, the horrors and the non-horrors and the conversations, the flat ties and the nightmares, the screamings, the lofters and the deaths and the long spaces of zero and all that. It begins to total and then they see the typer and they sit down and it pushes out. There's no planning it. Sorry, there's no planning, planning it occurs if they are still lucky. End of quote. And I wish you all a very, very nice, stimulating conference. Thank you very much.